Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Cam Ward and today instead of talking about the specs, I actually want to have a bit of a speculative conversation about black magic and why you may not want to jump onto the 6K Pro just yet if you already own a black magic camera. But again, it's more of a conversation piece, so do feel free to leave a comment and let's discuss black magic and the future of their cameras below. So grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and let's have a chat about camera tech. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably already know the ins and outs of the specs for the 6K Pro, but the key takeaways for me were the flip out screen, internal NDs, and probably better battery life given the new batteries they're using. Not only that, but the price point of two and a half thousand dollars is superb. Again, these cameras are exceptional for the price points. And simply put, this is a far better value product, in my opinion, than the Pocket 6K. Now, if I was entering the Blackmagic ecosystem for the first time, I would wholeheartedly recommend the Pocket 6K Pro. Even having not used it, the Blackmagic Pocket cameras are fantastic and the 6K Pro model fixes most of the issues that I have with the Pocket 4K, which I currently own. So this is where I'm going to get a little bit speculative and I'm just going to do some long term thinking here perhaps. But I actually think that this 6K model will become the new baseline for Blackmagic. I could see them phasing out the Pocket 4K in a year or two and having just the 6K and the 6K Pro model and then having another camera, say an 8K camera between the 6K and the 12K. There's a lot of Ks being thrown around here. I think this mystery camera in the middle will be the camera that most people who currently own Blackmagic cameras are waiting for. And I think we need to remember that what we're looking at here is an update on the Pocket Cinema camera line. It's not a new camera. It's got the same sensor as the Pocket 6K. This is just an iteration. And for me, it kind of makes the 6K a little bit redundant at this point, just purely because given the price point of the 6K Pro, it kind of competes with your Canon C70s and Sony A7S Mark III's. If you're looking for just the best image quality, then this is probably the camera to go for over those other two. So if the 6K Pro is so good, then why haven't I ordered one? And will I order one? And that's something I'm still unsure of. For me, I'm going to wait until the end of the year to decide. My biggest issue with this upgrade, the 6K Pro, and the one thing that stopped me pre-ordering it immediately, is the fact that there is no RF mount. A Super 35 sensor is totally fine with me. However, having an RF mount would give us way more options with lenses, and it would also allow us to adapt that Canon speed booster, which they've just brought out, and turn the Pocket 6K Pro into a full frame sensor. Not only that, but RF lenses are just simply newer tech with sharper lenses, and things like the Canon 2470 f2.8 is one of my favorite lenses to use, and the newer RF version of that has image stabilization built into it. So then I would have had a stabilized image at full frame with internal NDs as well, making the Pocket 6K Pro just an absolute beast. And I actually think that we're gonna see RF come to these Blackmagic cameras soon. And again, I'm not entirely sure how the tech here works, but I believe the reason that the Komodo launched without RF support, even though it had an RF lens mount, is because the engineers at RED had to reverse engineer and figure out how to use the RF mount. So Blackmagic might be in the same situation. They might just still be working this tech out and we'll see it in an updated version of the Blackmagic line. Now, if Blackmagic wants to compete with these other cameras, such as the Sony a7S Mark III and the Canon C70, they're missing a few key features in this new model. And some of those key features are, you know, autofocus, in-body image stabilization. For me, it just seems a little bit odd that these features were omitted, simply because given the flip out screen, it seems like they're targeting more run and gun videographers here with this 6K Pro model. And if you know me, I'm not one to rig up these cameras. So the 6K Pro, again, looks ideal for someone like me if I was entering the ecosystem for the first time. And given that is the same sensor as the Pocket 6K, it still just feels like an incremental update and you're not gonna get that much better. It, well, the image quality should really be the same. So a lot of people feel let down about the form factor of the Pocket 6K Pro because we were all expecting or wanting a more boxier form factor in the shape of the Komodo. And I actually still think this camera could come. It could be an updated version of the Micro Cinema camera. 
and I think we could see it maybe towards the end of this year or early next year. We all want that boxy little form factor where you can build it up, rig it up, rig it down. Just all the benefits of the Pocket 4K and the 6K combined into one make it a more accessible camera than the Komodo. Because for me, again, as good as the Komodo looks, the frame rate options be pretty limited and that massive cropping on the sensor are still big downsides for me. And one of the reasons that I just didn't immediately buy that camera. I'm looking for a great all round cinema camera that offers just the best image quality. Again, it's very subjective, but after using Blackmagic, I actually just love the colors out of Blackmagic and I love using these cameras. So that's why I've just not opted to go for a Canon C70 or a A7S Mark III or an FX6. For me, it's just, I just like to use certain cameras and Blackmagic is the one I'm liking at the moment. So I'll see how the rest of this year goes, see what other cameras come out. I'm not in a rush to buy any more cameras at this point. The Pocket 4K is superb, I absolutely love it. I've done a full review on that camera if you want to go check it out. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's discuss this and um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to hear everyone's thoughts on what they want to see out of the next Blackmagic camera. If you do want to see more of my work, you can check me out on Instagram at camelwardfilm. And yeah, I will catch you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can learn new skills, deepen existing skills, or just get lost in creativity. Some of the classes I would recommend at the moment is the Advanced Video Editing with Premiere Pro 2020 by Jordi Van Pute. It's a great way to just learn some new tricks within Premiere Pro. But if you're ready to take it to the next level, you can learn Adobe After Effects CC for beginners with Jordi Van Pute as well. Learning After Effects is a great tool to have because it just allows you to do so much more with video editing and visual effects work. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning. That means there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. And the first 1000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video.